<laughs> well, I'm back in the shop with the Sport Dory, and uh, it's fun to be back, actually, and uh, we've got a few different things going on, but before I get involved with working on the Dory itself, I wanted to show you a few things. We teamed up with Ballpark Blueprints, and uh, we've come up with these canvas uh, images right here of the lines drawings of the Sport Dory. Now, this is your uh, body plan right here and your longitudinal lines. It's even got your table of offsets, so you've got the whole ball of wax right there. This is on canvas. Uh, these come stretched like this. And then we also have them on paper uh, mounted with glass like so. Or you can buy this one, just the image uh, rolled up in a tube. So uh, I think these things are pretty nice and uh, I think it would be a great way for you to uh, help us uh, support uh, little channel that we've got going on so uh, you know these things also come uh, printed on a t-shirt like this like I'm wearing which I like a lot I think these look really great and we've got the coffee mug and the travel mug now these things are pretty neat because uh, you know you know every time you're traveling or every time you're sitting at home you get to tip these things up and take a look at the sport dory so it just keeps reminding you of the same things you know these things are available to all on our website so you know, take a look at the website and uh, try to support us with that. And uh, I'm just going to lead you into the boat. We're starting to work on the boat again. And the first thing we're going to start doing is making a pattern of the next plank on the other side. So let's get started. I'm going to take a walk over to the other side of the boat and get going. Right now I'm making the first pattern of one of the binder strakes. That's the next strake up uh, from the broad strake. So uh, I'm doing it with the same exact same piece of plywood that I used to make all the patterns for everything else on the whole boat. So, you know, I actually cut it into shape a little bit, kind of haphazardly, and then put it up against it and spiled off of it maybe five-eighths of an inch, I think it was the uh, thickness of my rule, and then cut it. So I've cut it a couple of times already, and I've got it in position. Then I decided what I would do would be plane it a little tiny bit, just to fit it a little tiny bit, so if I decided to, I could trace from that side rather than spile from it. Now what I have to do is fasten it or clamp it into position, and I'm going to have to make a spiling from this line right here onto the pattern, maybe two inches or so. And then I'll be able to lift the pattern off and go using it to search down a, a piece of material that I can use to make that piece of uh, board right there for the boat. So what I'm doing now is using my business card as a spiling block. Now you could use anything for a spiling block, just about any size. It really just has to get up onto the pattern. That's all it has to do. And uh, I could have set the business card the other way and done it the other way, but I did it this way right here. And you can see that what I've done is I've pushed it up until it laps up on top of the plank that's on there already by an inch, right up to that very faint line right there that's the overlap line. And then I've made a mark on my pattern on the other end of the business card. So when I transfer that onto the plank, all I have to do is set that business card down in the same spot and then just make a mark on the other end and that transfers the pattern onto the material. You can also do these spilings with a pair of dividers, but I've never really liked that system. It leaves little holes in what you're working on, and uh, it's never as accurate as something like this. I've always used a block to divide things. As a matter of fact, I remember when I first started working on boats, I had a little piece of plastic that I carried around with me everywhere, and I used it all the time. I used it for years and years, and uh, I was so disappointed uh, when I lost the darn thing that uh, uh, I, can't, I can't even tell you, but uh, I've gone over to using a business card, and the business card really works fantastic, and you might have noticed that's my business card there, so. <laughs> now we've got a full pattern of that section of the binder strake, the first binder strake that we're going to put on the boat, 
It just happened that there was a stringer right here that I put right on one of the planking lines. So I decided I'd just fit the pattern up against that stringer because that's as accurate as I can make it right there. It's already fit, you know, it's already stretched and fared right through the planking line. So I decided I'd fit up against it. I did that first. Then I used my business card actually to spile the other side onto the pattern. And so now I've got a full pattern. It goes all the way forward. I mark it forward. Uh, you know, at the forward end of the stem right here. And uh, now I can take it off and go searching for a piece to make that plank out of. Now here's our first binder pattern right here. And uh, I set it down on this one piece of lumber right here. I've been picking out some of these pieces that have got a curvature to them. You can see that this thing is not straight. Look at the pattern, it's not straight at all on either edge, you know, see that? So I decided I wanted lumber that was curved like that as well. So like I say, I've picked out a few pieces and uh, this is the first one. I think this one's got promise right here. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to get my business card here. Now I've got so much material left over on this side that I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over this way quite a bit. I'm going to move it over like this and trace it over here. It's better material over here. So I've got it moved over and now I'm going to trace it on this side because this is how I fit it up against that batten that was on the boat like so. That's just done without even moving the pattern at all, kind of careful like. Now I'm going to use my business card again here and spile the other side. And this is all just to get a rough cut because this plank is way too thick. So I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going to uh, rough cut it. Then I'm going to take and either resaw it or just push it through the planer or something, but it's got to be uh, thinned down to size here. There. Now what I plan to do is pick that up and saw that out a little bit heavy. Now, I want to be nice and careful. It's real easy to make a mistake in this bandsaw and go over the line. Really, really easy to do. Now, you wouldn't want to try to hold this thing up yourself. You'd have to have kind of a long bench or something. Otherwise, you wouldn't get away with it. The way I've got it, the bandsaw is just out in the middle of the shop. You can push it in any direction you want. But when I do something like this, I need someone to hold the other end of it up to either get started or to finish off. And you might recognize that guy that I'm working with right there. That's Halsey Fulton, my videographer, editor, and best of all friends. So he's going to be assistant shipwright today. Now once I've got it sawn on both sides, I'm going to take it over to the planer and stuff it through the planer. Now this particular piece of material right here was uh, quite a bit thicker than I needed and not thick enough to make two planks. So rather than resaw it, my bandsaw wasn't in a position in the shop to resaw it right at this moment, so I just pushed it through the planer a number of times to get it down to the right thickness, which is a half an inch. And I don't mind having to put it through there a number of times. It really doesn't matter. You know, I'm not in a big, big hurry, so I'm not pulling off an eighth of an inch at a time. I'm only doing about a thirty-second of an inch at a time. And uh, so it takes a few passes, but uh, again, we don't want to go past that half an inch and make it too light, so I'm being very careful as it comes to the end here. Now that I've got the thickness of this knocked down to a half an inch by running it through the planer, I'm ready to bring it over and fit it to the boat. Now before I do that, I'm going to use it to kind of search around to find another piece, you know, because this piece has been cut to shape so I can use it to find another piece for the other side. So I'm going to use it for that purpose first and then I'm going to start fitting it to the boat because I do have three more pieces right here. I'm not sure if any one of these pieces will make another one of these, but I'm going to find out just by overlaying it before I take off with it. So that's what I'm going to do first.
Mm -hmm. Okay. We've been flipping through a few pieces here trying to find the right piece to match the other side. That's this piece right here. And uh, I've kind of come up with this piece here. It's got like a curvature to it right here. This would have been the bell end of the tree down here, and it gets narrower as it goes up. But uh, this is kind of quarter sawn, and uh, it's not very thick. It's not as thick as the other piece. And uh, it has this little kind of uh, imperfection in it right here, but I think it's so wide that I'm just going to go right alongside of it and get my piece right out of it. So let me lay my piece right on top of that piece. And... Uh, I'm just kind of using it now as a pattern just so that I can get the next piece out and it fits really nice right about like that right there. So what I'm going to do is trace it out and I'll be able to saw that out and then I'm actually tracing it a little large and then I may saw it even a little larger than that but what I'm trying to do is just get it so that I can run it through the planer. Get it down to size here, so I can run it through my little planer. My planer is only 12 inches wide. There you go, just like that. Now I'm back on the boat here, and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of work on what they call the gain here. We've got the plank all cut to shape, and we fit it and uh, it's, it's doing really well, it's looking pretty good, but like I say, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on this now. What we've got here is uh, an overlap here of an inch, and uh, it's gonna have about a quarter of an inch of wood exposed uh, so that it hangs out past the broad strake, but as it goes forward, it tapers right down till it comes right flush, so it's nice and sweet up here. So uh, what I wanted to do is show you how I go about doing this now. This is pretty tricky. I've never really done any work like this before. And this is done with a rabbit plane. Very simply, I'm going to put it on the line that I want to plane at. And I've gone along here a few times already. But see, I've got it little one corner is what I'm using. Just to dig a little tiny trench along that line like that. Now, I can do it without even looking at it because I've got a little trench to follow. So, I've got the very corner of my rabbit plane on the line there, and I've already made a few passes, so I've got some depth to it already. Once I do get a little bit of depth, I'm able to go a little bit faster. Now, it's got like a little hill in it right in here, or a little corner right in here. If I were to try to tilt my plane down like that and knock that off, what would happen is I'd ride up on top of this little edge, and I don't want to do that. I want to leave that. So as I make a few extra strokes here, I'm going to start to tilt the plane over gradually. I'm not going to tilt it over all at once because I would just mess up my work here. So there, that's pretty much done. I'll have to, of course, fit the other plank to it and make sure that the angles match and different things like that. But in essence, that's what we're doing right there. What I've done is I've dug a little rabbit into it right here, and it tapers out, and the thickness of the plank right here goes from about an eighth of an inch here down and down to like a sixteenth of an inch here and right down to almost nothing right down here. But you, uh, that's okay on the inside of the boat, especially right at the very stem end of it here at the bow end. But you wouldn't want this plank that you're putting on to have a feathered edge on it. That's why you're doing it, so that this plank that goes over top of this piece does not have a feathered edge. I'm back on the starboard side and I've got the first piece of binder straight cut out and all set up and the gain has all been planed into it and I've fitted already once or twice and took a look at it. There's just a few things I want to show you about it. I've hollowed this end of it because the stem is round still and uh, <coughs> I found out that trying to fit 
a flat piece to the stem and get it to bend on there is a little bit tricky. So what I've done is I've hollowed this part out because I didn't layer this plank like I did the one below it. So it doesn't want to cup quite as easy. So I hollowed this end out, like I said, and it should go on there really, really nice right now. So let's try and clamp it up in position and see what happens. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to stick one more clamp on it right here to see what it looks like and uh, pull it right down tight. There is the first of the binder strikes going into position right now. You know, I've shown you quite a few things about it, how I took the pattern, how I cut the plank out, you know, how I had to plane it out, plane the material down to thickness. I've hollowed the uh, forward end of it out to fit up against the stem real nice. That makes it fit a lot, bit, a lot easier. It is a flat plank but it does have a hollow end on the bow end of it. So that's the nature of that plank itself. I've cut the scarf on the other end of it to fit against the tail section of it here. I still got to make that section a plank. I've got the very forward section made on the other side and uh, it's fitting and starting to come together pretty nice. I'm not having any problems. Next week I'm going to show you how we go about drilling the holes and what we use for fastenings and kind of things like that. So that's what we're uh, up to. Uh, what I've got to do is clamp that after section on it. I've shown you that already, making that scarf in position. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that myself and then the plank will be ready to fasten on. But uh, before we do that, I'd like to talk to you about one more thing. We're looking for a new shop. You know, we want one a little bit bigger, you know, one that doesn't get us freezing all winter, you know, one that's got a little bit of space, you know, one uh, maybe in a boatyard somewhere, somebody that really appreciates, you know, wooden boats and the building of wooden boats, you know. We've got all kinds of equipment and we're willing to share up on some of the equipment a little bit, you know, if that would be a situation that would work really nicely. But uh, like I said, we, uh, we've been looking for quite some time for a new place and we haven't come up with one yet. So we're appealing to uh, all our fans, you know, and uh, we're just hoping for the best.